It's so good to be back in the house. We missed you guys. We tuned in uh, online, and uh, that was a great experience, but there's nothing like being here in the house, and I'm glad you're here today, and for you who are tuning in, if you ever have the opportunity to come join us, please do so, and, uh, because it is, it is even better in here. These are some great folks, and they look good, they smell good, they act good. It's a good place, a safe place to be, praise the Lord. Now, in Alaska, it's a lot like heaven. Uh, it never got dark this time of the year. Uh, we were up 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning. The, the light was up, and it was 60-something degrees, and it was amazing. It was amazing. Hallelujah. And we came back here, and it's 125 degrees, <laughs> or it felt thus. <laughs> Wow, wow, but uh, we will get cooler here, we know. That is on the way, it, 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 and we thank God for that. Uh, I, I got, we got pulled by sled dogs. I mean, we got, it was amazing. Uh, we, Caleb and I had four-wheelers, and we went through miles and miles of forest and trails, and we, I was being a little kid. You, you guys would have, y'all should have jumped on the back with me. I would have took you four-wheeling. It was amazing. But uh, we had a great time, and uh, seeing family as well, that was amazing. Food was all good, and, but it's good to be home. It's good to be home. And, uh, and coming back, I'm taking on even more responsibility, so I need your prayers for that. Uh, we've been given a, a platform on God Stance TV station. An hour program has been given to us every week on Wednesdays, live at 2 o'clock. And uh, praise the Lord. And this is specifically geared towards the Muslim community. Uh, I was on a, kind of a trial run uh, about a month ago, and we had over 15,000 people call in and give their life to Jesus Christ. And I was like, ab- I was just so amazed. So they said there was such a good response. They wanted to give us an hour every week uh, live. So, so every Wednesday now, I'll be doing that. Yeah, so keep us in prayer as we reach behind that Muslim wall and bring Jesus Christ and help those that are in bondage get set free uh, by the power of God. Uh, We thank God for that. Also, as Pastor Rodica said, please pray for us as we have uh, 19, maybe even 20 now going to Africa in August the 6th through the 13th. And um, we want to bless them. We have 32 churches there, 33, a third one, a 33rd one just opened this year in a village that we will be actually visiting them as well. And um, we want to, as we bring our 33 pastors together and their associate pastors and their praise and worship leaders for this conference and training and all their children and so forth, we want to bless them. Uh, If you could help us do that, uh, some of these pastors, their pay may be a live chicken that comes in on on the offering for a week, and that's their pay. Uh, a chicken uh, for, for the whole week of service that they're doing unto the Lord. Um, and, and the travel that they do, everything is hard. Everything is so much more difficult than here. And we would like to go not just paying our way to get there and back and to bless them in the spiritual. We'd like to leave a blessing with each of those pastors. I would be so honored if you would help me do that. So be praying about that and what you would do and Help us uh, to be a blessing to them. They work every year. They never ask a thing. I love their resilience. I love their commitment to God. They don't do it for man, and they don't do it for uh, recompense. They do it for God, and uh, I appreciate that about them, but I really want to bless them. We are their leaders, and, uh, and our church here is basically their foundation that they look to and has helped them get to where they're at. So, so I encourage you to do that. Now I want to look at the Word of God this morning that He gave me. I was so excited when He gave me this Word. Uh, I was actually uh, in uh, Alaska when He gave me this Word. I was meditating on the Lord. And He said, I want you to go back and I want you to declare who I am to my people so that their faith would rise up, that their knowledge would increase and that their wisdom would increase and their faith would increase to see me as their chain breaker. So I want to talk to you today about God, the chain breaker. And he actually, in the scripture, he's Elohim, Nathok, Maser. Uh, You probably have never, you've done Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, uh, Elohim, but you probably have never called him Elohim, Nathok, Maser, 
which is the God who breaks chains. He is the God who breaks chains and he makes himself known in the scripture as that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I want to thank you for your word today. I want to thank you, God, that, that your Holy Spirit is here to give us uh, enlightenment, to give us revelation, to give us understanding so we can make application of your word, Lord God. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would do a miracle now with everyone under the sound of my voice. Do a miracle. Touch our ears to hear what you, Holy Spirit, are saying. Touch our eyes to see what the word of God is revealing to us. Touch our hearts, Lord God, to believe it, Lord, in such a way that our feet and our hands and our mouth would bring, bring forth manifest to your glory and to your honor, that your kingdom would advance, Lord God, that the forces of darkness would be driven back and that the light would shine and expose, Lord God, your kingdom and your world, will and your work here on earth. Lord, let you receive all the glory, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. We want to look at Psalms 107, verse 14 this morning in the Old Testament. Psalms 107, verse 14. He, talking about God, the chain breaker, he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. And he broke their chains in pieces. Now, Psalms 107 has a larger narrative of God being the God who rescues. God is the God who redeems. God is the God who protects. God is the God that, that causes uh, his will to overcome the will of the enemy so that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven through those who cried out to God, the Bible says in their distress they called out to him and God illustrated his power by breaking the chains of bondage and bringing his people into freedom and favor. And I would encourage you today to follow that as well. Let us cry out to God, especially as we watch on the landscape of what is happening and how the enemy is at work and how the enemy is trying to bring so much destruction and so much division in our country but not only our country, probably in your family and in your personal life, in your physical life, in your health, in your wealth. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But when the people of God would cry out to God, God would show forth himself mighty on their behalf. So I want to talk to you about Elohim Anathak Mosar today, the God who breaks chains, and I'm just going to call him God the chain breaker. God the chain breaker because that is who he is. And, and we all have forces that are coming against us. Not only our nation, not only the political leaders, not only the economic factors, not only the educational factors. We see that even in our own personal lives, there are demonic forces that are trying to hold us back. And we wonder why we can't get ahead and we wonder why we can't break this addiction or we wonder why we can't control our temper. Uh, those are chains that are restricting us. The Bible calls them out, chains of guilt that are, that are beating ourselves up over our past mistakes or how the enemy has brought condemnation into our lives. Chains of depression, that dark cloud that follows us around, that, that keeps us in that mindset of seeing everything from the negative perspective. There are chains of low self-esteem that the enemy puts on us where we never feel good about ourselves. We hate ourselves. We're created in the image of God, but we can't see that. All we can see is the image of brokenness, the images of defeat, the images of, of depression. And there's that recording that's playing in some people's mind constantly. You're not smart enough. You're not talented enough. You don't have a good enough personality. Let me tell you what. I'm here to tell you today. God did not create you to live in this kind of bondage. God did not create you to live bound bound by loneliness and bound by shame and bound by negative words that have been spoken over you. That is not God's will for your life. The good news is that God is the chain breaker and, 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 and we can look to him, we can cry out to God today and even though our circumstance may seem like it's permanent, God can turn that around in the name of Jesus. 
I believe my assignment here today is to preach the word of God in such a way that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh God, I pray, Holy Spirit, you would help me preach it with the anointing in such a way that your faith would wake up that your faith would begin to stretch and and begin to yawn and begin to flex and and it would get ready to usher in the chain breaker to do a miracle in your life and in your family's life. I pray today for the chain breaker to show up and show out in your life. That chain of loneliness, I say, be broken in Jesus' name. You're going to meet that divine connection that God has for you. You're actually going to meet somebody better than you imagined. Come on now. That chain of injustice, I say, is being broken where you've always experienced in the bad breaks and you're always being overlooked and you're always being targeted. I'm telling you, it is broken in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I actually say God is going to make the enemy pay you back. The enemy is going to have to pay you back. He's going to have to make up for the wrongs that were done to you. I'm telling you, that chain of lack, uh, that chain of struggle, not having enough, loosed off of you in the name of Jesus. I declare that opportunity is going to chase you down. You're not going to have to go after it. It's going to come after you. Hallelujah. And the reason why is because the chains are coming off. The chain, I, even as I'm preaching, chains are, I hear chains falling. I hear chains falling. The chains are coming off. You're going to be released into favor. You're going to be released into healing. You're going to be released into new levels that God has for you. I declare it in Jesus' name. I see in Luke chapter 12 or 13, I think it is, Luke chapter 13 talks about this uh, time where Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. And and he saw this lady who had been uh, sick for 18 years, the Bible says. She's bent over and not able to straighten up. Now, it was the Sabbath that Jesus was there, and they're not supposed to do any kind of work on the Sabbath. So the religious leaders are watching to see what Jesus is going to do. And Jesus said something very interesting in Luke 13 and verse 16. He said, So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? Where does the bondage come from? Where does the chains come from? Satan, whom Satan has bound. Think of it, Jesus said. Just think about it. For 18 years, she's been bound by Satan. Should she not be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? He described this sickness as a chain. Eighteen years, Satan had her chained with his infirmity. So that eighteen years, she was bound by Satan. I'm telling you what, there's a real war going on. There's a war in the unseen realm that is greater than any war you've ever seen in the physical realm. And that war and that warring is going on. Satan is trying to kill, steal, and destroy every one of us. We see it on the news. We see it in real life. We see it uh, not only in America, but in other nations as well. Satan is trying to destroy. But he's also trying to destroy you here today. But I'm here to tell you, Our God is not a God just for a government. He's not a God just for the international world. He's a God for you as a son or a daughter of the Most High God as well. Here Jesus points her out as an individual saying, you as an individual are important to God. And Jesus touched the lady and instantly she was healed. And I would say with that, whatever has you bound, whatever has been restricting you, I believe God is saying it's time for you to be free. I believe that's why I'm here today is saying it's time for you to be free. Just like it was her time to get free, Jesus was there, Jesus is here by his Holy Spirit and it's time for you to get free in Jesus' name. I say he is the chain breaker and he is here ready to break some chains today. And the Bible says he broke the chains into pieces, meaning the chain could not be reconstructed. It could not be reorganized. That this thing is coming to an end in your life and you're not going to have to deal with it going forward. Hallelujah. It is not your destiny to go through life with these things limiting you. Do you hear me? 
if you will receive in your spirit today, I encourage you, if you will receive it in your spirit today, I believe that every chain that has been holding you back, that the enemy has put on you, is being broken. Chains of sickness, chains of depression, chains that have been in your family for generations and generations, broken in the name of Jesus. You say, well, pastor, this sounds good, but I don't feel any different. The circumstances still feel and look the same. Well, I'm here to tell you that's where faith comes in. That's what faith is all about. Instead of thinking, oh man, this isn't working for me, I want you to turn that around and start thanking Father God. I want you to start thanking Him, your chains are gone. I want you to start having faith. That faith is something we need to act on. It is the currency of heaven. It is how we operate in pleasing God. So turn it around and start thanking Father God that your chains are gone. Start thanking Father God that you are free. Thank God that every force the enemy sent against you, Jesus came head on, took it, defeated it, and has given you that victory. We've got to learn to come in agreement with God. There's power in agreement. We've got to learn to come in agreement with God. Freedom starts in your mind and it manifests through your mouth. As long as you think, I'll never get well, you're not going to get well. You say, well, don't you see the medical report? You say, well, my grandmother was depressed. My mother was depressed. I reckon I'll always be depressed. It's how it's always been. Let me tell you what. You've got to change the way you think. Because it's different now. If you exercise your faith, you can take hold of the revelation of God and see God manifest miraculously in your life. The chain breaker wants to show up in your life and set a new standard and defy all the odds that you've ever been dealt. Hallelujah. See, God told the Israelites, the enemies you see today, you will see no more. They couldn't have changed that. They didn't have the power to change that. But God stepped in and says, if you'll come in agreement with me and you'll live and honor me, I'm telling you, I am the God that will take care of the enemy. The enemy you see today, you'll see them no more. Those things he said that have held you back will hold you back no more. God is stepping into our situation today and saying, this is a new day a day of freedom, a new day of wholeness. And I can see it. I can see it through the eyes of faith. I can see chains coming off. I can see chains of debt being broken. I can see chains of cancer being broken. I can see uh, chains of diabetes being broken. I can see chains of heart disease being broken. I can see chains of fear and low self-esteem and depression being broken off of your life. And here God saying, you will see them no more. You will see them. It's not, the, the chains were destroyed. The chains were broken into pieces, the Bible says. That means it's not coming back. Somebody say, praise God. Praise it's God. not going to be a temporary release, a relief, and then it's coming back. No, this is permanent, praise God. So I want you to look at yourself. Is there anything limiting you today? Is there anything that is holding you back? I pray that you would have a new perspective. I want you to declare my chains are gone. I've been loosed by the work of Jesus Christ. My faith in Christ has given me liberty. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I want you to start living from a freedom mindset, not a bound mindset. Turn it around. Stop living with a bound mindset. Start living with a freedom mindset. Stop saying I'll never get ahead. Well, you say, well, Pastor Tim, I, I never got any good breaks. That was the past. I'm talking about a new day. Yeah. Well, Pastor Tim, I've never been healed. That was the past. This is a new day. I want you to start declaring, I've been released into increase. You need a rhyme? I'll give you a rhyme. I've been released into increase. I've been released into increase. I've been released into favor. I've been released into the blessings of God. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. Hallelujah. Instead of I'll, I'll have to deal with this addiction my whole life. I've had it so long. It's just all I know. No, that chain that's held you back has been broken. Praise God. 
Say, I'm on my way to healing. I'm on my way to promotion. I'm on my way to blessing. I'm on my way to feeling better than I've ever felt before because of what Jesus is doing in my life. Not just because you're free uh, in our lives uh, doesn't mean you're going to instantly see everything. You've got to walk it out. You've got to walk it out. See, God is not raising a bunch of spoiled brats. We didn't raise a bunch of spoiled brats in our house. Our kids know how to cook. Our kids know how to wash dishes. Our kids know how to take out the trash. Our kids know how to, to take, take care of their clothes and wash their clothes and fold their clothes and put their clothes up. Our kids know how to clean. Our kids know, they know, I mean, one of them, the youngest one was under the car mechanic in yesterday. I mean, we're not pouring everything on them to where, you know what, if you don't have uh, things that you do, you'll never be worth anything. I mean, if you don't get out of the bed, your muscles will atrophy and you won't even be able to walk. So, so we got to walk this thing out. 1 Timothy 6 and 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. We got to fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight because it's a fixed fight. Any fight you know you're going into that you're going to win is a good, fi a good fight, right? Right? Now, if you go in there and you don't know if you're going to win or not, you may be a little nervous. You don't know if the opponent's a little stronger than you, but he says this is a fixed fight. The fight of faith is a fixed fight, meaning it is a good fight. But you've got to fight. You've got to show up. You've got to fight. You're going to have to receive this message of faith, and, and then you've got to find that you're not going to be restrict like, restricted like you were before, not because of how you feel this moment, but because of what God's Word said. And I'm taking hold of what God's Word said. I'm not holding on to my circumstances. You're going to be able to do things you couldn't do. Come on now. The guilt is no longer going to hold you back. The depression is no longer going to hinder you. That hot temper is no longer going to pop up and get you in trouble. That addiction is no longer going to keep you a slave to the pigsty of what the enemy has for you. It's no longer going to control your life. Why? Because the chain breaker is in the house. The chain breaker is here. Are, has the addiction done for you one-tenth of what God has done for you? Has the addiction brought you any real joy, any lasting peace, anything good? No, it takes you further and further and further down. I'm here to tell you sin will hold you longer than you ever expected to be held. It will drag you deeper than you ever wanted to be dragged. And it will cost you more than you ever wanted to spend. Sin, uh, spend. sin is from the enemy. The danger of that sin is to bring destruction in your life and give the devil an open door that he can bring bondage and he can bring so much torment into your life. I say I wasn't created to advance the kingdom of Satan. I was created to advance the kingdom of God. So if I'm going to advance the kingdom of God, I need God's help. I need God's miraculous power. I yield my life to Jesus. I yield my life to God. I'm not going to yield my life to some uh, 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 bondage. I'm not going to yield my life to some type of, uh, of addiction. No. You think I'm going to let alcohol or drugs or addiction of any kind keep me out of God? No. I got the chain breaker. You say, well, I was born with it in my blood. Well, I'm talking about be born again so that you can have a renewed blood. Hallelujah a sanctified blood. Stop claiming the past and start claiming the future that God has for you. The chains have been broken. Just like with this woman here. This lady came to Jesus. She'd been sick for so long, 18 years. Some of you have had an addiction. Some of you have had some type of chain, a bondage of some sort on your life 18 plus years. And I'm sure she thought it was permanent. But Jesus showed up. Let me tell you what, Jesus showed up. And Jesus said, should this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed from her sickness? Should she not be loosed from her sickness? He said, she's a daughter of Abraham. That meant that she had a part of the covenant of God that God made with Abraham. She wasn't just any woman. She had divine rights. She had divine privilege. Come on now. Because she was of the family line of Abraham. Let me tell you why. The Bible says in Hebrews that we have a better covenant. Better than Abraham's covenant. 
better than the covenant she had, we have because our mediator and our high priest is Jesus Christ. And it's not the blood of a four-legged lamb that brings our covenant in, but the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And here she was, just any woman. She had the privileges and divine rights in the line of Abraham. But you and I have even greater privilege and greater divine purpose. Hallelujah. You and I are not just anybody. If you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior... If that is the case, you are a child of God. Now, we don't teach here at Christian Embassy to be born American is to be born a Christian. To be born in a Christian family is to be a Christian. To go to a Christian school is to be a Christian. Here, we teach the Word of God. And unless a man repent, unless a man repent, ask God to forgive him and cleanse him, and yield his life to the lordship of Jesus Christ as the only propitiation for his sins, there is no salvation other than the name of Jesus that is under, given under heaven that we might be saved, that Jesus has to be our Lord and our Savior. But if you place your faith in Christ, come on now, and he is your Lord and Savior, you are a child of the Most High God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. No question about it. And if Jesus was here today in the flesh, he is by spirit. But if he were like those 33 and a half years he walked on the earth, if he walked into Christian embassy, he would look at you, he would look at me, and he would look at us and say, should not this son of the most high God should not this daughter of the Most High God be free from their sickness, be free from their addiction, be free from their depression, be free from the bondage? Should they not be? Whether you've had it for 18 or 80 years, should you not be free? Come on now, you have rights because of who you belong to. You have rights because of who you belong to. You may have struggled with this thing for a long time, but just like her, just like her, it is not permanent. I declare that over you today. It is not permanent. It is temporary. It is packing its bags even as I speak, and it's getting out. It's got to go. Your day of freedom is here. The chain breaker is at work. Hallelujah. Jesus said in verse 12, he said, Woman, you are loosed from your sickness. He declared it. Chains broken. The chain breaker said, you are loosed from your sickness. I take and echo the words of Jesus Christ from the Holy Bible, the Word of God. And I would say to you, daughter of the Most High God, you are loosed from the chains that have bound you. I would say to you, son of the Most High God, you are loosed from the chains that have bound you. Even as he spoke it over her, she immediately, even though 18 years it had been there, it had to go. I release it over you as I declare the Word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe you've been pursuing your dreams and you've done your best to, and doors keep closing and there's one disappointment right after another. And it seems like nobody ever wants to help you. Now you're tempted to accept that it's never going to happen. Well, I say to you, you are loosed from what has been restricting you. You are loosed from that demonic path that the enemy had you on. Now it's time for you to do your part and try again. Go again. Move forward again. You're going to see doors open that you couldn't open. People are going to go out of their way to help you. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Things are going to fall into place. And yes, yes, we have forces trying to stop us. But there are forces greater than that that are trying to help you. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in this world. I'm telling you, there's no chain too hard, too strong. Been there too long for our God. No addiction too great. No sickness too big. No enemy too powerful. God controls the universe. Hallelujah. And he said in Jeremiah 30 and 8, For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke. The devil got a yoke on you, but he said, I'm going to break his yoke from your neck. And I will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no longer enslave you. 
He said, I'm going to break that yoke and tear to pieces those chains that have been holding you back. I'm going to tear off those chains and remove you out of the enslavement. Let me tell you what. If God doesn't break the chain, he, he didn't say, I'm just going to break it. He said, I'm going to tear it off. I'm going to destroy it so it can't be put back together. Hallelujah. The, the psalmist said it this way. He said, you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. So if God doesn't remove the obstacle, that doesn't really matter. God will take you over it. He's going to take you through it or he's going to take you over it. Either way, you're free. Hallelujah. And I believe even right now, even as I'm preaching this word, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith is rising up. Faith is the currency of heaven. Some people are appropriating, taking hold of what Jesus has provided. I believe that even while I'm preaching the word of God right now, chains are falling off. What's been holding you back, what has been uh, enslaving you will enslave you no more. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's in Acts chapter 12. King Herod, the political figure of that day, is trying to do everything he can to denounce and silence and stop the spread of Christianity. He has just had uh, James, the brother of John, uh, he killed him with his sword and destroyed, uh, trying to destroy the leaders of this new Christian movement. Now he has Peter arrested and put in prison. And he's going to go on trial the next day and probably put to death, just like James had been put to death. So it's the night before his execution, you might would say. Now the cool thing is it says Peter was sleeping. He was chained between two prisoners, but he was sleeping. Okay? He was sleeping. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know if it's a good thing that he had so much peace in God that he could sleep even though he was bound. Or he just knew that this was his fate. He gave in to his fate and he's sleeping. Either or, here's the message. That he was in prison. He was chained. He had chained between two guards. He had these guards on the outside and he had two iron gates, the Bible says. And a group of believers have gathered together at John Mark's mother's house. And uh, they're praying for Peter. They're praying for Peter. Now, Herod is ready to put him to death probably the next day. And there they are the night before, and they're praying. And in the middle of the night, while they were praying, the Bible says, an angel showed up in the prison. And the angel had to wake Peter up. I'm here trying to wake somebody up today. I'm trying to wake somebody up today. You can't stay sleeping when God is moving. you got to wake up. If you, he, the chains coming off of him wouldn't have been any good if he'd have stayed there asleep. It's time to move forward. It's time to go to the next level. It's time to start walking in your miracle. So the angel came and, and woke Peter up and said, you got to get dressed and we got to leave here. And instantly the Bible says the chains fell off Peter's wrist and the prison doors were open and the guards' eyes were blinded and, and, and he walked through the first gate and then the Bible says he walked through the second iron gate. God is making a way where there seems to be no way. Then Peter goes to the house where they're praying for him and there's a gate on the outside and he's knocking on the gate and Rhoda goes out and looks through the people to see who's behind the gate because for safety they just didn't open the gate. And Rhoda got so excited when she saw it was Peter, she left him locked outside and ran back into where they were praying and told everybody, you know, that's Pete. we're praying for Peter's freedom and deliverance and he's at the gate. Well, they didn't believe her, but she kept on and they went and they finally opened the door and let Peter come in. And I'm sure they're asking him, what happened? What happened? And he really couldn't explain it. He probably said, I really don't know. I was sleeping and an angel woke me up. And suddenly the chains fell off my wrist. I'm telling you, somebody's going to go to sleep tonight and you're going to wake up and you're going to find that when you get out of that bed, there, you're going to get up and walk out of, without the chains that you went to bed with. That while you're sleeping, it's going to take place. While you're sleeping, it's going to take place. And I want to also notice that note that they were praying and this caused the move of God. 
If you've got a family member that's bound, if you've got a friend that's bound, if you've got a co-worker that's bound, and you care any at all about their soul, you care anything at all about their freedom, don't give up on them. Don't turn a, a blind eye to them. They need you now more than ever. Maybe they're acting a fool. Maybe they are, they're, they're, they're despising the very things you stand for. But they're blinded by the enemy. They're in chains. They're in bondage. And they need your help. And you need to call their name out before God. Because God will hear and answer our prayer. Okay. So what we need to do is we, we need to keep praying for those that are bound. Now, Peter's in there. I don't know. I wasn't in on the conversation. They probably asked him, well, did the angels unloose the chains? Or did they go and sneak the key from the jailer and open your chains? Or did they pull the chains out of the wall? How did the angels do it? And Peter said, I don't know. They just fell off. And I was able to walk out free. I'm so encouraged to tell you today, I don't know how you're going to get free. I just know you're free. I just know you're free. Hallelujah. I can't explain the circumstances that's going to bring you out of this bondage, but I can tell you the bondage breaker is in the house and he's going to get the glory and he's going to, because the chains are coming off even though if it makes no sense. Maybe there's no explanation. Suddenly you're going to be catapulted to the next level. Suddenly you're going to meet that person of your dreams. That is if you're unmarried and you're looking. Okay, if you're married, folks, you got to stay together. But like Peter, you will be just minding your own business, being your best, trying to, to cope with your bondage, trying to just manage your demons, struggling to survive. On their own accord, though, the chains are going to fall off. The circumstances are not going to be able to hinder the chain breaker, our almighty God, when he gets involved in the situation. And our God is full of surprises. Hallelujah. He'll show up when you least expect it. He'll show up seconds from your death with a hand that'll reach through the roof of a car and carry you through. He'll show up. Let me tell you what. His hand is held back so much from you that every one of us would be rotting in the ground today had it not been for the hand of God. Hallelujah. The obstacles look too big. But suddenly out of nowhere, God's going to turn it around. It's not going to be your talent. It's not going to be your determination. It's not going to be your strength. Come on now. I'm telling you, we got to do our part, but God is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. And when you come to the end of yourself, I can tell you what, you can know this isn't the end of the story because of God. But God, but God, but God, hallelujah. I'm telling you, he is our chain breaker. He's going to show up. He's your chain breaker. So quit telling yourself, I'm stuck. Quit telling yourself, I always had this illness. I'll, I'll, I'll always have to fight this addiction. I'll always be lonely. Stop telling yourself that. Those chains are not your destiny. That is, you were created in the image of God, and God never created, God did never create you in his image to represent bondage, but freedom. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Let me tell you, the chain breaker, the most high God is working in your life right now. As you've made the effort to come and hear this word, God works during the preaching of the word. God works during the declaration of the word. God works when the assembly together, there's one can put a thousand, two can put ten thousand, twenty can put ten septillion. We, have, we are a warrior's force against the forces of darkness right now. And you are in the place right now to receive a miracle from God. You're not going to be a slave to sickness, I say. You are not going to be a slave to depression, I say. You're not going to be a slave to addiction, I say. You're not going to be a slave to fear, I say. I want you to see most of us, we know God is our Savior. We know God is our Redeemer. We know God is our Shepherd. But I want you to know Him as your chain breaker. He's your chain breaker. Hallelujah. And it's time that the chains fall off. Hallelujah. If you've got any children off course, family or friends, pray, pray for them. Keep praying for them. Well, I've been praying. No, you need to pray with greater faith. You need to pray with a vision that the chain maker, you're talking to the chain maker, the chain breaker, the chain breaker is going to break the chains off of their life even while they are sleeping. Praise God. 
Just think of what you could become without the limitations the enemy has put on you. What you could accomplish if you got rid of that chain of fear, that chain of insecurity. What kind of relationship could you have if you didn't have that chain of guilt or that chain of anger or uh, that feeling about yourself? Or, or just all that you could do if you didn't have all that negative stuff wrapped around your neck. I say it's time for you to rise up as a child of God. And it's time for you to step into your freedom. Your destiny is too important. Your assignment is too great for you to go through life bound another day. Why don't you call on God, the chain breaker? Call on your God, the chain breaker. Oh, God, help me to change. Help me to release this anger. Help me to forgive the people that have hurt me. Oh, God, help me to accomplish my dreams. Help me, God, to leave my children better off than, than, than uh, what they were born into. Help me to break these bad habits and live free and whole. Let me tell you what, if you'll cry out to God, he said he would destroy, break into pieces the chains that bind you. Hallelujah. You do your part, God's going to do his part. God's going to do his part. Somebody say, praise God. Praise, praise God. God. I say this over and over because if we're not careful, bondage becomes normal to us because it's all we've ever known. It's normal to have bad relationships. It's normal to be hot-tempered. It's normal to be angry. It's normal to be unforgiving. It's normal to be sick. It's normal to live in lack. It's no, it's, I never get any good breaks. That's how it is. That's normal. But I say, friends, that is not normal. That is a yoke. That is a chain. It is limiting your movement. It is restricting your ability. You are made in the image of Almighty God. He has crowned you with favor. He has put seeds of greatness inside of you. You were not made to go through life barely getting by. He created you to be free. He created you to be happy. He created you to accomplish your dreams uh, and not to have a mediocre uh, life, but to excel and leave your mark on this generation. Don't let the yoke become normal. Don't learn to live in the chains. Don't learn to function in dysfunction. Please hear me. God had the prophet Isaiah say in Isaiah 10 and 27, he said, I I'm telling you that the anointed one is going to come. He's prophesying. And when the anointed one comes, he has an anointing that's going to lift the burden and destroy the yoke. He's going to break the chains. He's going to break the chains. And if you'll remember, when Jesus comes on the scene, Jesus tells us, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Isaiah prophesied that the anointed one is coming with the anointing that lifts the burden and breaks the chains, destroys the yoke. He says, I am him. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. We're not waiting for Jesus to come. He's already come. We're not waiting for the prophecy to be fulfilled. The prophecy is already fulfilled. Jesus says, I've come and, and to bring deliverance to the captive and freedom to those who are bound. I've come to be your chain breaker. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you that you and I need to celebrate him as our chain breaker today. Is he's not, we're not waiting on the second coming. We're not waiting on the rapture. We already, the first coming has taken care of it. It is a part of the atonement. It is a part of the atonement. Just as much as your salvation is in the atonement, your healing is in the atonement, your deliverance is in the atonement, your freedom is in the atonement. You've got to have faith to appropriate it, take hold of it. It's yours, it's yours. This is a new day. The yoke has been destroyed. The burden has been lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must see that. We must know that, that God has freed us. We have, we have to refuse. We have to refuse. I refuse to live another day as a heathen. I'm born again. Right? Not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did for me, I receive it. In the same way, I refuse to live another day with a yoke or a chain on my life. Why? Because the same Jesus came to heal me, saved me, came to deliver me. Chains, broken. That's what the anointing does. So, if you and I want to do it God's way, we've got to have our heart reach out by faith 
and take hold of what God is doing. I believe God is releasing you to go where no one in your family has ever gone. God is releasing you to go where no one in your family has ever gone. Do you hear me? You say, well, I only have a few years left. Moses just started when he was 80. Just started when he was 80. Come on now. If God needs to give you 40 more years to accomplish it, start accomplishing it. No one that I know of in the Lambert family or the small family had ever earned a, a college degree, a master's degree, and a doctorate. I was the first one. I didn't do it to break that chain. I didn't do it. It's just God opened the doors and kept me going. Now we just celebrated Jewel. He just graduated or just finished up, and he's a dentist, a doctor. Dr. Jewel Morris, he's my dad's sister's son, grandson. And, uh, and, and I could name some others. Somebody had to break the ceiling. Somebody had to break the ceiling. You're going to go places your family's never gone. I'm declaring it right now. Some of you, you're going to experience wealth at a level your family has never experienced it. Now, if you don't want that, you don't have to get it. But if you want that, you can receive it. That God wants to break the, break the level, break the ceiling, take you to the next level. How many of you are going to receive that? How many of you are going to receive it? Some of you are going to live longer than anyone in your family has ever lived and you're going to be healthy and have the right mind. You're going to be healthy and have the right mind. You say, well, my grandmama lived to be 101. Well, you're going to be 102. Go ahead. Claim it. And she lost her mind. You're going to keep your mind. Glory to God. God is releasing you to go where no one in your family has ever gone. You're going to break the bad habits that nobody was able to break. You're going to accomplish bigger dreams than anyone ever imagined. Talent is coming out of you that you didn't even know you had. The Spirit of the Lord said you didn't even know it was in you. But when the chains are broken, you, there's going to be a freedom and there's a talent in you you didn't even know. Though, I'm telling you, that depression is coming to an end. That low self-esteem is coming to an end. And God is not only breaking chains, He's about to, ready to catapult you to a new level. It's not going to be little steps baby steps is a catapulting to the next level he's going to give you favor he's going to give you respect he's going to give you influence in ways you've never seen I i'm preaching i'm preaching to get your hopes up why because the bible says now faith a now faith is the substance of things hoped for i'm trying to get your hope up so that your faith will take hold of the word of god the word of god hallelujah it's up to you. It's up to you. I say it's time for you to go and receive favor in new ways. I would say to you, get ready for God to surprise you. Now, I don't want you to get so excited you can't sleep at night. But I want you to go to sleep and wake up saying, what is it, Lord? What is it, Lord? Every day, this week, every day, I want you to go to bed thanking God for the surprise. Lord, I'm going to sleep. I thank you for the surprise. You're my chain breaker. I'm going to wake up in the morning at another level. I'm going to wake up in the morning. If you need an angel to wake me up or the alarm clock, either one, just wake me up so I can walk out of this prison. I can walk out of this level to the next level. Hallelujah. Get ready for God to surprise you and make things happen that you didn't see coming. And here's the key. God is not only ready to break chains off of you that have been holding you back, but he's breaking chains that are holding back what belongs to you. So it's not just the chains that's been holding you back. There's been chains holding stuff back that belongs to you. And, and there are blessings with your name on them. Promotions that have been crafted for you. A healing, a business, a baby you've been praying for. Let me tell you what, God has been crafted for you. And God is releasing them. God is releasing them. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord saying, what has hindered you in the past is not going to hinder you anymore. Whew. That which has hindered you in the past, he is saying, is not going to hinder you any longer. Because the chain breaker, the most high God, is releasing it for you right 
now into freedom, into healing, into new levels, into the fullness of destiny. In Jesus' name, you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. You will be promoted. You will come out of that prison. You will come free of those chains. And those things that have been chained and held from you are coming. The attraction, your faith is pulling them in. Your faith is pulling them in. And God's going to be glorified. And as you're enjoying your freedom, let's not forget those that are in bondage. Our friends, our family members, our co-workers. And let's pray for them. Oh, let's pray for them. There's power in prayer. God is a God who hears prayers. He answers prayers. They cried unto the Lord and He destroyed the chains. He broke them into pieces. Broke them into pieces, the Bible says, so that they could no longer be put together. He is Elohim, not that Mosar, your God that breaks chains. He's the chain breaker. How many of you want to put your faith in him right now? Let's just stand. Oh, God, we stand in your presence now, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for your word today. You're our chain breaker. Oh, God. If you've got, you recognize bondage in your life. You recognize a chain that has been binding you. You recognize a yoke that's been yoked around your neck. And you're declaring by faith today that the chain breaker is breaking it off of your life. I want you to come to this altar. I want you to come to this altar. That's your step of faith right now. Lord God, I want to thank you. This is a, a walk of thanksgiving. You're coming up here to thank him. You're coming up here to thank him. You enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You enter into his courts with praise. You're entering into the presence of the chain breaker right now. You're entering into his gates right now. You're coming into his gates with thanksgiving. I want you to thank him. I want you to thank him. Lord, I thank you. I thank you right now. You're breaking the chain. You're my chain breaker. You're breaking the chain. Oh, begin to thank him by faith right now. Hallelujah. I hear the sound of chains falling. I hear the sound of chains falling as you begin to thank him right now. As you begin to praise him right now. Oh, I hear the sound of chains falling. Hallelujah. I hear the sound of chains falling in the name of Jesus. Breaking, breaking, breaking shattering, shattering right now. Oh, begin to thank Him right now, oh God. I thank You, Lord. I thank You for the freedom. I thank You for deliverance, Lord. I resist the devil. He gotta go. I resist the devil. He's gotta go. Hallelujah. Oh, draw nigh unto God. Submit to God. Submit to God. Resist that devil and he's gotta go. That chain's gotta go. That yoke is got to go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now what I want you to do as you're thanking him for your freedom, I want you to start praying for someone. Someone, I know the Lord brought them to your mind. A friend that's in bondage. A family member that's in bondage. Someone you love that's in bondage. Someone that you met at work. The, the Lord crossed, your, crossed the path so that you saw the bondage they're in and you're beginning to lift them up right now. Begin to lift them up right now. Oh, be the ones praying so an angel can visit them in their prison. Be the one praying for them right now that the chain breaker can be introduced to them in their prison, in their chains. Oh, you are the link. You are the link of getting them out. You are the prayer wire of getting them out. You're the one interceding to get them free. Lift up their name before God. Lift them up before God. Don't let them suffer alone. Don't let them stay imprisoned. Don't let them stay bound. Reach out by faith in prayer and lift them up. Cry unto God the chain breaker and lift them up to be free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we lift them up to you today. Oh, we're not going to see them bound any longer. We're going to see them serving you, God. We're going to see them living for you, God. We're going to see them growing in you, God. We're going to see the devil lose them. And God, you're going to gain them. 
We're going to see the enemy's hold be broken. And God, they're going to embrace you, Lord. We lift them up. We intercede for them. We're not going to let them suffer alone. They're in darkness. They're in bondage. They're in prison. They don't even know how to get out. They don't know how to get free. But we know how they can get free. And we call upon you, chain breaker. Oh, God, our chain breaker. Send an angel. Send us your spirit, Lord God. And bring forth freedom into that son's life, into that daughter's life, into that mother's life, into that father's life, into that co-worker's life, into that friend's life. Oh, God, we're not going to let them go on their own. We lift them up to you today, God. In the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Ira la bashanda rabasi. Ira la bashanda rabasata. Yes, we intercede for them, O oh God. We intercede, Lord God. Oh Lord, Lord, it's been exposed, and we see the leaders in our country and the bondages that they live with, and the bondages. And the blindness, Lord, we lift up our leaders. You tell us to lift up the authorities over us. Lord God, we lift them up, God, that you, the chain breaker, that they would receive deliverance from you, Lord God. That the blinders would be moved off of their eyes and they would see the glory of the Lord. This isn't about the glory of man, but about the glory of the Lord. And they would be a part of your kingdom work, Lord God. We intercede for our leaders in our country, Lord. We intercede for the leaders in the countries of this world, Lord God. Oh, we lift them up to you today, God. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains Do you hear them? Do you hear them? Tune in your faith hearing. I hear the yes, yes. Do you hear them? <laughs> Falling off of our grandchildren. Falling off of our parents. Falling off of our grandparents. Falling off of our spouses. Falling off of our friends. There's power. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up. That army is standing at this altar right now. You are a part of that army rising up. <laughs> There's an army rising up come on, come on. to break, break every, every chain, chain, break, break every, every chain, chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. The Bible says that there is no other name under heaven given among men by which they may be saved. The name of Jesus. If you're in any kind of bondage and you've not yielded your life to Christ, let me tell you what, you need to submit to Him today. Call on the name of Jesus. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. That word saved means chains broken, delivered, and made whole, made free. But you got to call on the name of Jesus. 
You got to believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. He is alive. And you got to declare that he's your Lord. You repent. You ask God to forgive you. You turn. You turn your mind. You turn your life to surrender to his Lordship. And saying from this day forward, Jesus, I serve you. And you alone. You are my Lord and my Savior. The Bible says your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. The Bible says angels rejoice in heaven over your salvation. The Bible says the old is past and you have become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit has baptized you into the body of Christ. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. Now you have covenant rights and covenant privilege. And ought not this man Ought not this woman who is in covenant with God be loosed, be loosed of these chains? I declare freedom to each and every one of you. Father, as we go into this week, I pray, God, we would walk out our freedom. Every day thanking you, thanking you in advance before we even see the manifest, knowing that you are not a man that you should lie. But you will honor your word. You are our chain breaker. And we celebrate you as such as we go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How about go and tell the good news? Tell others about the chain breaker. Amen. How about love on somebody, hug somebody's neck, shake somebody's hand, Bless somebody before you leave here today as we go in the name of the of Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>